put my phone on silent. I'll sit back down. <laughs> Take one, Mark. I guess I'm a little nervous. Better lighting on my samurai bun. <laughs> it's all about showing the highlights. Z, Jacob Ellis, take one. That Second wasn't. Sticks. That wasn't snappy. Second though. sticks with a little snap. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. My name is Sage Erickson. I'm Coco Ho. My name is. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Sage. <laughs> The Supergirl is so special. It's an event here in Southern California in the summer, and it kind of just embraces women, extreme sports. There's not just surfing, there's like music festivals and all these crazy things going on, which is so cool. It's so amazing. Like, this is the X Games that I'm used to seeing, but all females. Hopefully at the end, you get to wear a cape and dance around. <laughs> This year has been the best it's been for as long as I've been doing it, pretty much. And I started doing this contest when I was nine. It's fun, it's strong, and it's inspiring. To wear the cape again would be so nice. Enjoy, enjoy the show. <laughs>
I try when I do the full rotation. Air full rotation. <laughs> That's why I'm not trying to. Here, she's got speed. There's the launch. There's the rotation. Silvana Lima doing what she's been doing for a decade. It's going to be a good one. Bianca Bendag out of South Africa. Courtney Conlog out of Santa Ana, California. Yeah, game's on. Usually the smile turns into a game face, but I'm still smiling on the inside. Yeah, it's the best feeling for me. I love competing. It brings that challenge, and it's exciting to perform in front of an audience and a stage. Courtney took to the surf right away, seemingly hitting every wave in sight. Not wasting any time. Bianca would get a chance to answer. And down the beach, here she comes, and the goofy footer stands just about six feet tall. Big, powerful, just ripping down the line. But it wouldn't be enough to overcome Courtney's onslaught. And before moving on to the quarterfinals, she took a moment to connect with some fans. I love doing what I do and being able to inspire the next generation. Those little girls are who I'm trying to influence in a positive way, and yeah, it feels good. The Supergirl event is my favorite one of the year. All the women come together to represent something greater than ourselves. It brings so much empowerment to young women. So many little girls down here, it's so inspiring. That was me, you know, once upon a time, and yeah, it just makes my heart so happy. Every year it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and I can't believe the number of girls that keep turning up for this event, and the crowds get bigger and bigger. Every year, you know, there's more people down here, there's more tents on the beach, there's more going on. They've got skateboarding, they've got musicians, they've got surfing. They've got like a 12 foot half pipe back there. Anytime you get to be a part of a movement like this, it's a great thing. You know, I'm always feeling extra inspired and motivated once I leave the Supergirl. When we return, we'll check out the event's festival village, hear some great music, and find out who'll run away with a Supergirl cape. The Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Pro is being brought to you by Neon by Paul Mitchell, style that stands out. By Nissan, innovation that excites. By Tri-City Medical Center, advanced healthcare for you. And by Supergirl, the DC superhero who embodies female strength and empowerment. Welcome back to Oceanside for the Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Pro. I'm back to life, I can breathe again. It's like you wouldn't even know me. It's Supergirl has action in the water and right on the land. You get to hang out in this awesome beach environment and there's action in every direction. It's, you know, crowded and there's live music and there's amazing food. We have concerts now and we've got DJ competitions. But we're good to go if you guys want to rock. It's very cool, it's very, very cool. For me, I, I grew up on the beach, so to be able to be on the beach, playing a concert, hanging out, it's, it's, uh, it's very awesome. All the entertainment and all the markets and everything that's here, it, it just really makes the event super fun for everyone to come down to. The Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Pro provides the opportunity for up-and-coming surfers to compete with their idols. Because of this and the chance to earn key points on the women's tour, the best surfers in the world are here in Oceanside. Krista Moore is, uh, I think, every girl's favorite surfer, at least uh, mine. She has three world titles, and she just represents strong, beautiful surfing. And she is definitely a super girl. She did the day I aired, so I always love to watch her. And again, if one's good, another one's even better. Carissa made history by becoming the first woman to ever do two technical airs in one heat. There's a great opportunity out there right now. Lots of waves coming through, and it's really peaky. So um, it just g gave me the opportunity to try some different things that I've been working on. And I was stoked. I was so stoked to make a couple. So it was really cool. I just really respect her for taking female surfing to the next level. She just empowers women more than most people. And I think that that's amazing. Unfortunately for Carissa, her round of 24 heat saw her matched up against two very strong surfers, Silvana Lima and Courtney Conlog. A back and forth heat ended with Carissa, the odd woman out.
Also making early exits were CT stars Lakey Peterson and Laura Enover. The common thread in both of these heats? The 17-year-old Australian, Kobe Enright. Look at that wrap, Enright. She's had some, uh, some great waves out there and just 17 years of age. Well, to be honest, going to this event, I didn't even think I'd make it this far, so I'm just gonna take it heat by heat. Back in the round of 16, in heat six, another young gun, Carolyn Marks, had much the same attitude. I'm pretty young and I'm just trying to get experience in this event and um, I just want to make as many heats as possible. I just want to surf good and um, make all my heats. <laughs> so a really good exchange from both women in this heat so far. For Caroline, one step closer to winning the Supergirl cape. I don't know what to do with myself if that happened. I'd, I'd be so excited. Yeah, that'd be incredible. Dream come true for sure. No stranger to winning, two-time Supergirl champion Sage Erickson was set to take the next stage, but she almost didn't make it into Heat 7. As surfers, we check in probably anywhere from 15 minutes before to 20 minutes to pick up our jersey so we can watch the waves, and um, my jersey wasn't there. 11 minutes, 11 minutes. Remaining. Then it was 10 minutes and my jersey still wasn't there, and then it was eight minutes and seven minutes, and so. I stormed production and uh, you guys got my jersey? Sorry, Sage. I got the jersey and it gave me a little extra time to get in the lineup and get started in that heat. <laughs> that heat with Holly was pretty intense. I knew that Holly is a really strong and powerful surfer. She actually did have the highest score um, of the heat. So I was fortunate to get two that equaled better than hers and move on. Ever the gracious winner, Sage had a hug for Holly and words of wisdom for her fans back on the beach. I just, you know, keep encouraging him to follow their heart and, you know, take the steps to, to get to their goals. You know, we can kind of dream in our head and forget that we need to work towards it. And um, yeah, anything's possible. So I'm just so grateful. One spot left in the quarterfinals and one thing was certain, it would go to a woman from Hawaii. Summer's 16 years of age from Lahaina, Maui, and from the other island, the gathering place, the island of Oahu from the North Shore is the 26-year-old standout Coco Ho. So two phenomenal surfers here, great talents, great surfing families. Summer Macedo is a young Hawaiian hopeful, and uh, we haven't had one in a few years. So I'm so stoked for her, and I love her smile, I love her attitude, and obviously she rips on her surfboard. The two women hit a ton of waves, but didn't have huge scores to show for it. We definitely kind of psyched each other out, like we were both kind of falling or not completing rides. And uh, yeah, it took me to the last four or five minutes to get my second score, but um, I was really fortunate one came. Last couple of waves, let's see what's gonna happen here. So Coco Ho will move on to the quarterfinal match where we'll see veterans as well as up and coming stars Kobe Enright and Caroline Marks battle for the Supergirl cape. The quarterfinal matches up next. Every single woman that's here is a Supergirl because they're dreaming. The advice I would give to a young and up and coming Supergirl is to work hard because it doesn't come easy and once you get there, please never ever take it for granted. We can slow yeah, tell me what you're thinking. Got all night, girl, how about skinny dipping? Take a chance, I'ma give you what you want, yeah. Anything you ask, I'ma show you what you're Love thinking. is an island, island, and I'm in a diving, diving. Even if we're not dead together, I'm gonna love you till forever. Love is an island, I'm gonna love you till forever. This has been one of the best events in women's history. As far as surfing goes, 120 competitors and some excellent scores posted across three days of competition. Your love is an island. We are back at the Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Surf Pro, where some of the best female surfers in the world are competing for the Supergirl Cape. First up in the quarterfinals, Tatiana Weston Webb, a favorite of all the competitors here. Tatiana is the ultimate charger. Talk about feisty <laughs> in the water. She is take no prisoners. But also just her consistency and her determination is really inspiring. She's such a competitor. Like she's one of the best competitors I've seen come through in the last five years. Looked up to her for so long. She absolutely shreds. She's got the kindest heart and yeah, she's, yeah. <laughs> Even her competition in this heat, Keely Andrew, has nothing but praise for Tati. 
She is the hungriest, the most fierce, yet out of the water. She's so kind and uh, friendly, so it's quite, um, it's quite a double-edged sword. So it's really cool to surf against her, and um, yeah, she's pushing the sport every day, which is uh, a lot of fun to see. Towards the right section, that's Keeley on her third scoring ride. One nice crack and then carves it. It's super tricky out there at the moment. There's a lot of current and the waves are really dumpy. So um, it was certainly tough. I mean, Keeley is so good in, in little pure bowl rights. It's really hard to be her in those kind of conditions. I felt like if I just got um, an open wave that I would perform, and I did. It was really difficult to get those. I got, I think, both of my best waves in the last like seven minutes. The former champion advances on to the semifinals. In quarterfinal heat two, Courtney Conlog is going for her second cape. I could say the ultimate supergirl would probably be Courtney Conlog. I think Courtney has an intimidation factor about her because she's such a strong athlete, but really at the core of her, she is the sweetest person ever. Love what you do. That's definitely something I've always lived by and being authentic to who you are. She paves her own way. In the water, Silvana Lima in red, Courtney Conlog in the blue. Having a paddle here, she's up and riding Courtney. She's flying down the line, bust the fins out the back. And Red, have a look, Silvana Lima. Nice opening carve, she opens up her shoulders, then goes straight up on the second one and releases. The two women began trading scores immediately. So we'll get two turn combo in a short space. Silvana Lima from Brazil needs a score. A nice looking right hander, first carve is there, then hits the second one, then comes around and taps it once more. Silvana's been on a tear this whole week. She's looked real fast and sparky and I knew I needed to bring that uh, top performance. Courtney, she's up and riding. She needs a 6-5 win on this one. She moved back in the first. Really nice section. Blast the fins and rides out. The last score of the heat was enough to put Courtney on top. Big round of applause to both of these competitors. It was a super, super close battle. We step away from the competition to dive into the thoughts and feelings of our female surfers, asking if surfing is more of an art or a sport. Here's what we discovered. You know, there's a lot of debate if surfing is an art or if it's a professional sport. It's like this whole world wrapped into one. It's a lifestyle, it's a passion, it's art. It's an artistic expression, but it is very athletic, very demanding. I don't think it's so much a sport. It's made for some people, but for others, it's definitely an art. I think it's both. I think that's a hard question to answer. I mean, surfing is definitely a sport. I view it as a sport, but I think it's really important to look at it as a bit of both. Oh, I think it's both. It's like painting a picture, right? When you're on a wave, you're like, make it look as pretty as possible. There's definitely an emphasis on style. In sports, sometimes I think that gets thrown out. You know, it's not like tennis, where the net is always there and the line don't move. You know your opponent's strength. It's not like that. It's everything's changing, everything's moving, every wave is different. Obviously, competitive surfing, some of the creative stuff's not as in-depth, but on the world tour, you start noticing the personalities of each athlete and their own signature of creativity. I watch people surf and I'm just so in awe of it and I just think they're so beautiful to watch on a wave. And I think that's the beauty in it is that it contains both. I don't think there is necessarily one or the other. Obviously now surfing's my job and I compete and I've been competing for so long and it's taken me to amazing places around the world but surfing's definitely a whole package. <laughs> Up next, the Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Pro will continue as Sage Erickson takes on Coco Ho for a spot into the semi-final round here in Oceanside. The mission of the Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Pro event is to provide a platform of empowerment for young women. The Supergirl Gamer Pro is a video game tournament dedicated to female gamers to help inspire women to take a more active role within esports. The video game industry as a whole is growing substantially with competitive video games, casual video games. There's so much exciting stuff on the horizon for it. And we really wanted to give a platform for these women to be a part of that. 
This is the first year that Supergirl is doing a video game competition for women, uh, and we're really excited about it. Supergirl as a whole for the past 10 years has been uh, really working on underrepresented areas for women where they're huge consumers, they're part of the, the industries, but they're underrepresented in the top level in the competitions. Hoping that a platform like Supergirl Gamer Pro can help encourage more females to come out and compete on a scale and eventually hit that global arena. Back in the water, quarterfinal Heat 3 matched up two young guns, 17-year-old Kobe Enright and 15-year-old Caroline Marks. Caroline Marks is my absolute favorite Grom ever. She rips and, you know, she has such a good mature style. I think her explosiveness is really unique. You know, not many young girls know how to time it that perfectly and uh, she has that down pat. She has like so much passion and excitement, you know, like excitement from the innocence of a, of a 15 year old girl. It's, it's incredible. It's almost contagious, you know, when you like go and surf with her. She's got a really bright future and um, I'm scared if I have her in heat. <laughs> Enright wasn't scared, getting the first score of the heat. Straight off the bat, Kobe smacks that first section, comes around it and carves, and she's gonna tag it to finish. But Caroline would answer with a few nice maneuvers of her own. Here's the goofy footer out of Florida. Boom. Just powerhouse surfing. Kicking off one of the most furious back-to-back -back battles at this event. So very talented surfers, and they're just volleying back and forth like we've seen a couple of these heats. Everybody getting a score and going back and forth. Here's Kobe Enright. Savvy competitor. Last wave of 6.17. Things have changed just a bit. Kobe Enright now is your leader and up the ante. Last way for Carolyn Marks, a 6.03. Marks now takes the lead by 0 0.86 as they go back and forth, counting down to end the seat. If it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would happen. Five, four, three, two, and one. In the end, it was Caroline edging out Kobe, but a phenomenal heat, proving that the future of women surfing is in good hands. Paul Mitchell has been a part of action sports for four years. And what's really special about Paul Mitchell Supergirl is they focus their new hair care line, Neon, for anti-bullying. And it's about building girls up to be working together and not breaking themselves down. I can speak from a place of someone who was pretty darn bullied when I was younger um, in grade school. I was not by any means the cool kid. I just try to be nice to everyone and be positive to everyone, because you never know what they're going through. Everybody has their own story, and I just think that sharing people's stories are so important, because everyone's got such an amazing one or a hard one. No, no one's life is perfect. When I go out and see friends, see little girls, I try to make sure that they're not getting bullied. Young women have the power to change the world, so let's end bullying one act of kindness at a time. Back at the beach, one more spot up for grabs in the semifinals, and it would be decided by the most anticipated heat of the day, defending and three-time Supergirl champion Coco Ho up against two-time Supergirl champ Sage Erickson. Sage is such a rad human. Every time I see her, she's just a big smile on her face, and I mean, she's the best person ever. It's really cool. Like, when you're little, you uh, look up and you kind of want to be friends with them, and then now to, like, have them say hi, which is really cool. She's a fierce competitor, so I, I admire the lion heart she has as well. I love Sage's backside attack. I think she's very consistent and strong, and um, yeah, it always looks good. Coco Ho, full island style. She takes a lot of inspiration from her dad and uncle who are, you know, world champions and Hawaiian heritage and it's been really incredible to see her progress not only in her style but her ability to just surf a wave strongly. I think she's a great person in the water. She's all the time smile and talk to, with everybody. I think she is just such a representation of a graceful surfer and she's so beautiful to watch and I love, yeah, I love watching her. Coco tags the first one and slams the second one shut. Yeah, she foam climbs towards the left. Another little hit, and she's going to be out. Sage, nice opening carve. Then goes up in vertical on the second turn. 
and then tags the white water on the right. As expected, the two tour veterans traded waves, battling back and forth. Having some panic attacks up here. Every single quarter has been tight knit, coming down pretty much to the last exchange. And it seems like blue and red, red towards the pier, blue on her forehand as well. Red finishes, blue still going. Blue tags it again. And she's gonna kick out as well, 50 seconds. These heats are nail biting. I mean, one single wave can change everything. Sage Erickson, two time champion out here, trying to get a third one. In the end, Sage secured herself a shot at another title. For Coco, the comp was over, but that meant more time to spend with her fans. The semifinals are set. Heat number one, we're going to see two former champions go head to head, where in heat two, Carolyn Marks is looking to pick up her first cape. More from the Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Pro when we return. You just want the good life. to see here at the event, including Vibes Gamers vs. Surfers VR Challenge, where eSports stars went head-to-head -head against pro surfers in a virtual reality competition to see if gaming skills or athleticism are more important in the world of VR. Uh, that was my first time. Really good experience. I would definitely get into it more than other video games. That was also my first time. I actually had a really cool experience. Like, it's, it changes your perce perception of everything. And Before we jump back into the water, let's take a closer look at what separates superstar Tatiana Weston-Webb from the rest of the pack. To be near the water is so crucial. I grew up on an island. The water is definitely my life. It's like so much fun but there are aspects that are work. You know, you have to constantly stretch and maintain your physique and ready for moments that will challenge your body. It's very uncertain feeling when you're without vision. I have astigmatism, so that means one eye is lazy. If I take out my contacts or glasses, I have like anxiety attacks, so. There's been moments in heats where I've lost my contacts and like been unable to surf, and those moments are tough. People say that I grew up with a sixth sense because of my vision being kind of impaired. There were so many moments where I had to like feel out where I had to go or like what wave I had to choose, you know. I think it just made it very special. I just felt really connected with the ocean at such a young age, and I mean, maybe it would have been different if I had better vision, but I think it just made it more special. When I was surfing on my own, I was eight years old. I asked my father to get me a surfboard and the next swap meet, he bought me a brand new surfboard and I went out, started surfing, caught the bug, couldn't stop. Anyone knows my mom, they know that she's really feisty. She actually used to be a professional bodyboarder and she won Pipeline in like 1995. I think I have a combination of the two of them, which is Pretty good, I think. It's never a good thing to be negative on yourself. I used to get so bummed and I wouldn't be stoked to go back surfing. Now I don't let my results dictate my mood. When I paddle back out, I just go and have as much fun and pressure is something that can either make or break you. I feel so privileged to be under pressure situations because I am a professional surfer. And to be surrounded by people that are such big inspirations is the best thing ever. I'm just having the best time. It's impossible not to have so much fun. I think I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> Heat one was a matchup of two former Supergirl champions. Tatiana Weston Webb, Courtney Conlog, I mean, two brilliant surfers that just rock and roll. 
Courtney rushed out of the gate, determined to get the early lead. I just wanted to put the nail in the coffin straight away, so I got two massive scores right off the bat. Now to look here, she's up. Getting a pretty solid score in her opening wave. Whoa, that's an 8.33, a radical maneuver right there. She got the better of the exchange on the first two waves, and then, um, yeah, she got an eight right afterwards, and then she kind of knocked the wind out of my sail. A readier second, Tatiana, needing a 9.43. I was really fighting for survival, I guess, technically. 9.43, not impossible, but a little difficult. And this is a frustrating heat for her. Courtney's early efforts would prove to be enough. And for Tatiana, another defeat at the hands of the woman who is becoming her nemesis. Courtney's probably like the person that's beat me the most on tour and it's really frustrating to lose to her a bunch and um, I guess it's just fuel for my fire. Although Tatiana wouldn't have a shot at the Cape, she was still very much in the running to win the Nissan Supersport. I'm in first and Sage is in second and Courtney's in third, so we'll have to wait and see, but it really all depends on how Courtney and Sage do and they're both still in, so it's really close, I'm sure. I'm trying to win it and um, yeah, it gives me a bit more motivation, you know, to win this comp and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. This event is amazing to have all women surfing, all women DJing, um, all the other events that go along to really inspire young girls so that they can do something and that they're not limited by their gender or by anything else. There's not enough known female DJs, so this competition is really an outlet for that. I cannot believe I won. It feels really good, it's almost surreal. Thank you, JLab, thank you, Shannon, thank you to all the other DJs who came to perform and gave me a run for my money. Happy to see it and happy to be a part of it. My favorite emoji? Oh my god, I love emojis. My favorite emoji is probably the shaka. Everyone that texts me knows that I love the red heart. Where do I start? Do you love the unicorn? It's just so cute and colorful. I'm a lover. All the ones with the hearts. I like the drooling one. Thumbs up or something like that. The monkeys. Soul's the lady dancing one. It's totally irrelevant to any conversation, but I always send the shock. The tongue sticking out like this, that one's really good. <laughs> the night before the Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Surf Pro, some of the biggest names in surfing and celebrity chefs gathered for the Supergirl Champions Banquet at Master's Kitchen and Cocktail in Oceanside. All proceeds went to charity thanks to U.S. Foods and Culinary Playgrounds. Champions Banquet was really unique. They honored myself and Lakey, Sage, Tati, and Malia. And um, yeah, it was really special. And I was so excited that Supergirl and Paul Mitchell gave us that opportunity and just honored the athletes. Pretty woman chef from Los Angeles come in and we did uh, little samples of each of their foods and got to score them uh -huh, on a score sheet and that was pretty fun. I've never done that before. <laughs> it was just a really great night, fun time and for a good cause. Out of the fire and into the water. Back at the pier, let's take a look at how the second heat of the semifinals played out. It was young surfer Carolyn Marks going up against veteran Sage Erickson. That heat kind of started slow for me. I mean, I opened up really fast to the 5-5 and, um, you know, I surfed it safe. I didn't feel the most comfortable on my board and I thought, you know, that was a little bit of a lost opportunity. Good news for Sage, Carolyn wasn't able to immediately capitalize on it as the two surfers traded middle of the road scores. Second wave for Sage at 3.47. I believe she has a third wave to come through. Carolyn Marks a 3.83 and a 4.67. Now things get a bit interesting. It was actually super challenging. Um, Sage is such an awesome competitor and we, we were both we both had like fives and fours. I think I got about 10 four point rides and I was like, okay, I really need to step this up because Caroline is the best up and coming American girl. And um, you know, I can't leave her needing a small score. Red, how to luck, Caroline on the inside. She's up and riding, getting a 5.05 to move into first. Tags it a couple times and she's gonna finish. Sage Erickson, our heat leader, tags that one, comes around it. Hammers the second one, lays back, and finishes. 
Sage's opportunity arrived with seven minutes left in the heat. Luckily, I capitalized on a wave she just didn't make it into with priority, and um, that was my highest score, so things really paid off. As blue up and riding Sage Erickson, trying to bet her 4-5-7 on this one to extend her lead. Tags it a couple times on her forehand, and she's done. Trying to make it through to one more final here in Oceanside. This wave had such good shape, and it was just that little, like, clean bowl, and um, luckily Caroline just didn't make it into it. Um, I think she was a little far out, and my advantage being paddling out into it, I, I got it and got a 6-8-3. I wish I had more opportunity, but it's all good. I'm so incredibly stoked to get third place. It's like, it means a lot to me. I'm really pumped. <laughs> So Sage Erickson in the blue jersey advances on. Winning this heat gives Sage the opportunity to win the cape again. Will three times be the charm, or will Courtney get her second? The stage is set. And here's who's still in the running to win a brand new Nissan Rogue Sport by social media hits and points from the event. Neon is committed to spreading kindness and creating awareness for the anti-bullying movement. Neon encourages everyone to create a bully-free zone by shining bright, being themselves, and encouraging others to do the same. I've always thought like the best way to go about people who, who are hard to deal with or bully you is just kill them with kindness. I just try to spread kindness and awareness of it everywhere I get. I think to promote kindness and empowerment. I'm lucky enough to work with the Boys and Girls Club of Hawaii. I literally just go in and hang out. Every year I do a surf camp um, where I'm from in Florida and I pick 80 girls from 9 to 15 and I all teach them how to surf. It's what I do to give back and um, I think that's super important. I always try to give the time of day to my fans and tell them something that I think is amazing about them. Try and be positive in every situation. Focus on all the things people say positively about you. You know, be proud of yourself. Sometimes everyone's just got to get out of their head, get in their body and just have a dance party. <laughs> oh God, Share with us what you're doing to create a kinder world and an environment of self-love. This is the final, the pure pact, the beach pact. 6,000 points on the line for first, as well as $10,000. Runner up gets 4,500 points and $5,000 alongside that. I'm so excited. I haven't had a final with Courtney in so long. I love competing against her. She and I, when we compete against each other, we've competed in team events together and one-on-one uh, -on, -one on the world tour. Courtney's actually been my biggest um, childhood rivalry and has turned out to be one of my best friends and such a good supporter. And now we're coming up against a final, both on our home turf here in California, and um, it feels surreal. She's a very smart competitor, and wave selection is definitely her thing. We love playing tactics. <laughs> it's awesome. The Paul Mitchell Supergirl Pro was brought to you by Neon by Paul Mitchell. Style that stands out. By HTC Vive. Immersive room scale VR out of a single box. By Imperial. The world's only water positive beer. Cerveza Imperial. And by Essentia. A better you starts with a better water. Essentia helps you drink up more of life so you can do all the things that make you extraordinary. Back in Oceanside, California for the finals of the Paul Mitchell Neon Supergirl Surf Pro. In five, four, three, two, one. These ladies have come out charging all weekend. Why stop now? Sage, how to look on a bomb. Bottom turn right here, taps it and finishes her opening wave. I committed to one big section, and I would say that my board went, you know, more vertical and came down um, vertical also. Dropped a 7-8, and I'm like, wow, all right, game's on. And I was so excited, because I don't like boring finals. I'm like, oh yeah, revved it up. I'm like, sweet, this is going to be an awesome heat. And it seems like Blue Sage Erickson up and riding, floats the boat, comes around the section, Carves it in the pocket, then smashes it at the end. Great exchange. And Courtney Conlog finishing that amazing maneuver on her forehand. You know, she came back and got that 977 on only one maneuver also, so 
she upped me in that department. Yeah, it was pretty much just a forehand reverse, and I just laid into as much as I could. Courtney went up, threw her tail, spun it around, got super tricky, um, and I think that was the point of difference because that was, um, you know, a very high performance maneuver that most girls can't do. Red now in first with a 9.77, so that is the highest score of the event so far. Courtney's massive score and progressive trick left Sage playing catch up. Sage Erickson up and riding. Nice tag in her forehand and lays it back on the second one. And Blue's having to go. She's up. Needs an excellent score. Goes up into the lip and tags it one more time. That's not going to be it. So Courtney Conlock will be your champion here today. Five, four, three, two. One. And the crowd appreciates it. You know, there was so much energy and so much excitement that I feel a little let down that um, I ended up getting second, but also, you know, really excited for the rest of my events so that I can carry this momentum through. I ended up being progressive and uh, putting on a show and it felt really good. And that's what you want to do in a final is just entertain as much as you can because you did so much hard work to get there. It's like you want to uh, reach the summit and just cheer a bit, you know, and show everyone how excited you are. <laughs> Courtney's excitement was contagious as she was chairlifted off the beach by Sage. Those young girls and young women are why I do this, you know, I was that little girl and I had those big googly eyes and now I'm wearing a cape and really excited and happy and all this hard work really paid off. Your champion, your two-time champion, Courtney Conlog. It just shows that if you have that perseverance, the passion, the drive and the will to do what you want and get what you want, you just, you take it. No one's going to hand it to you. In conjunction with our new partner, Nissan, we are going to be giving away to one of the girls up here a brand new 2017 Rogue Sport. On top of the new car, they're also donating a $5,000 donation to the charity of the choice. There's one car and there's one check. So we did this thinking there is absolutely zero chance in the world we'd be sitting here with a tiebreaker on our hands. It ended up coming down to Tatiana and I tied. So this is going to be a pretty nerve-wracking coin toss. Yeah, it came down to a coin toss, and that was really, really nerve-wracking. I feel actually so shocked because I never thought in a million years that I would win a car. It's probably one of the craziest moments I've had on stage ever. It was amazing what Nissan ended up doing, and good on them, you know? So, Sean, if you could come up, and we're gonna have some pretty good news for Sage here. We're gonna give away a two-year lease on a brand new Rogue Sport, and uh, you're gonna be riding in style. It was almost Oprah, Ellen, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. This event's just such a phenomenal event, and it didn't surprise us. It just keeps surpassing every year and evolving and improving, and we always look forward to this comp. A very special thanks to the great partners that supported the event, including Patrick Young and the entire City of Oceanside team. Spring Hill Suites, Oceanside. Visit Oceanside. Fratelli's Italian Kitchen, Rubio's Coastal Grill, Exos, J-Lab Audio, Master's Kitchen and Cocktail, iHeart San Diego, all of the tremendous performers on the concert stage. WSL North America, Lindsay Jacob Ellis, Darcy Donovan, Scott Desiderio, Corey Whitlock, Amelia Brodka, Holden Dollarbook and Culinary Playgrounds, US Foods, Chefs Jen Story, Bev Lazo, and Meg Walker, Twitch, Bento Productions, Caleb Finn, our amazing volunteers, and our dear friends at both Paul Mitchell and Warner Brothers. I could dance right here. I know how to boogie. <laughs>